Alright, just going to do a video showing how the Talmudic Jewish Lobby's definition of so-called anti-Semitism, which they would lump in criticism of their blasphemous false religion of Judaism and their uh, blasphemous filthy Babylonian Talmud in with anti-Semitic uh, anti racism, as they would call it. Uh, how, but essentially their definition of that, I'm going to show how it, it totally undermines freedom of speech. You know, which is a consistent record of the Talmudic Jewish Lobby, the Judeo-Satanist Lobby, as I sometimes call it, is they have a consistent record of trying to shut down freedom of speech. And here's an article on that, uh, this another uh, another way of how they do that, essentially. So it says here on The, uh, the Guardian, anti-Semitism definition is undermining free speech. Lawyers and retired judges, judges argue that IHRA working definition undermines freedom of expression and Gavin Williamson is wrong to forcefully impose it on universities. All right. Continuing on the article, it's an uh, interesting one to say the least. It says, the legally entrenched right, right to free expression is being undermined by an internally incoherent, uh, non-legally binding working definition of anti-Semitism. Its promotion by the public bodies is leading to the curtailment of debate. Universities and others who reject the instruction of the Secretary of State for Education, Gavin Williamson, to adopt it, uh, sh uh, should be supported in doing so. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights declares that everyone has the right to freedom of expression. That right includes the freedom of to, uh, to hold opinions without interference and to seek, receive, and impart information and ideas through any media and regardless of frontiers. The right is embodied in UK law uh, by the Human Rights Act of 1998, Section 6, which expressly prohibits a public authority from acting in a way that is incompatible with that right. Sp uh, specific uh, protections for freedom of expression uh, at universities were also enacted in the Education Act of 1986. But of course, you know, the Talmudic Jewish lobby, they will, it's, it's only free speech if they agree with it, essentially. They'll, they'll cite freedom of speech when it, when it works in their favor, but if they don't agree with it, well, they don't want to have it shut down. Mr. Williams, uh, continuing on the article, Mr. Williamson was legally and morally wrong last October to instruct English universities to uh, adopt and implement the International Holocaust Rem Remembrance Alliance definition of anti-Semitism. He has threatened to punish them with loss of income if they fail to comply. This would be an improper in interference with their autonomy. The definition is often described as the international definition of anti-Semitism, but it has no legislative nor, author nor other authority in international or domestic law. No to the scholars of anti-Semitism, including Professor David Fieldman, director of the Peers Institute for the Study of Anti-Semitism at Bir Birkbeck, University of London, have criticized its shortcomings. The IHRA added to the definition of illustrative examples of statements that could be anti-Semitic, taking into account the overall context. The majority of his examples do not refer to, Jew to uh, Jews as such, but to Israel. They have been widely used to suppress or avoid criticism of the state of Israel. Now, I've already clarified my position on Israel before that I support racial Israelites, their right to be physically in that land, uh, not the false religion of Judaism, and I don't support the Israeli government, okay? They're a Jesuit-ran government. Uh, if anything, they're far from, I'm not, I'm not the kind of person who just says that Israel is like always perfect, they can never do anything wrong. The truth is the opposite, actually. They're they're far from perfect. In fact, they're, they're all kinds of wickedness and sin that goes on there. Hence the reason for the time of Jacob's trouble, where God puts them through his wrath for seven years. But, you know, uh, criticism of Israel, well, I guess you'd have to outlaw the Old Testament then. Because the Old Testament, uh, like Ezekiel 16, Ezekiel 21, I think 23 is another one, you know, uh, it's criticizing Israel for their wickedness and the nation of Israel, you know. So, I mean, if, if we're going to lump that in with, you know, I mean, it's insane. It's, it's how they curtail uh, biblical and also just uh, legitimate criticisms of the state of Israel, which I make all the time. Because, like I said, they're far from perfect, you know. They're all in all kinds of sin. And also it's, it's used to silence criticism of the blasphemous, filthy Talmud and their blasphemous, false religion of Judaism. But again, the Talmudic Jewish lobby has had a, a consistent history that goes back 2,000 years of shutting down speech they don't like while trying to cite freedom of speech when it suits them. Another aspect of the Talmudic Jewish lobby is hypocrisy. You know, we see that in Matthew 23. So anyway, I wanted to point out just yet another example of the Talmudic Jewish lobby acting like a bunch of communist Nazis. You know, trying to censor speech they don't like. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.